God has blessed me with skills and abilities to work with my hands. Um, I started in construction when I was 16, uh, framing, and I did this part-time through high school, and then uh, went on, once high school was finished, I went on full-time framing. It was okay for a while, but it was hard to earn an income, and the weather conditions in the, in the winter were just awful to work through. Um, so after a while, I just got fed up with it, and uh, went into installing kitchens and doing small renovations. After about two, three years, I was pretty much working on my own, installing high-end kitchens, uh, like high-end kitchens, upwards of six figures. And I was, at that time, I was about 23 years old, 24, young. I, I had made it uh, in construction side of things. Um, I was working in the richest homes in and around London, um, traveling around, doing installations. If anybody had questions, they called me up. Uh, I was having builders request me, uh, designers saying, I only want Mike installing my kitchens. Um, everything that was going on just kept boosting my ego. And I was working alone, um, so I was I had to lift everything by myself, and and I was proud of the fact uh, that I could do that. I've been uh, always been physically fit and uh, in good shape, and and uh, I felt I've been invincible. On December 12th at 10 a.m., I was cleaning my tools. Um, uh, it was a Monday morning, so I was just making sure everything was working properly before I started the day off and started the week off. Um, and I was just, I had already set all my tools up, taken them out of the truck, done all the heavy lifting. Then I go to lift up the front of my miter saw, which weighed about two and a half to five pounds, um, which is nothing. And at that point, I felt my back, uh, just a, a stabbing pain in my low back, and I, I hit my knees. It was all I could do to, to breathe and to stand up. I immediately went to the doctors and I was told I, ha I had to take time off work, and for me that was almost unacceptable. And I thought, okay, he said three weeks. I said, okay, I'll give it a week. So after a week, seeing the doctors, still in severe pain. I, I couldn't do anything. Um, and I saw more doctors and more doctors and time off work um, and not able to do anything. Mike was off work. Libby was four months old when he got hurt. So that made Caitlin 19 months old, which was like having two babies. I was depressed after that. It was incredibly busy. He was home. I would have to take them all out, go grocery shopping, do whatever. He would meet me at the door when I came home. And I would hand him a kid, not thinking anything of it. Honestly, I just, okay, here you are, take the baby. And he would fall, like he seriously would just fall on his knees and until I took her back and then he would go back and lay down. I spent a lot of time lying on the couch, watching TV, playing video games, um, sitting at the computer, killing time, just not doing anything because I really couldn't. Um, I couldn't lift any of our girls, even Libby, she was only a couple months old. Our relationship at that time wasn't, it wasn't great, but it wasn't awful. It was frustrating for me and he was frustrated being not able to do anything. It was winter so I would have to shovel the driveway and he would watch and then tell me how bad he felt when I came in the house and I would try very hard not to complain. That was extremely hard to, to watch. I hate watching people do things for me when I'm, when I should be capable of doing anything. Um, it was about three months that he'd been home before things got a little bit more tense. I had about had it with doing everything myself, needed help really badly, and there wasn't anything that he could do about it. So, um, so I started just not talking so much. I would tell Nikki if she wanted something to go ask her father, and at which point she would say she wouldn't call him dad anymore. It became father. <laughs> so 
that's when I knew it was kind of becoming bad. It was just a lot. It was just a lot to deal with three very little kids who just wanted their dad and would cry for him and he couldn't do anything. So, like all the bedtimes, all the, like everything, I was it. He couldn't come down the stairs for months. So, to play with him in the playroom, like, he couldn't sit on the floor. He couldn't, like, they couldn't climb up on the bed to get him. So, and when they did, when I would put them on the bed, they would crawl on him and it would hurt. So, it was frustrating for them and then I had to hear them complain and then, Mike couldn't move so good, so it was, you know, get him a sandwich, get him a glass of water, which never was demanding, but just something else that I needed to do. So I did try to be patient. It was just, it was a lot. Like six months is a long time. So by the end, I was really frustrated, really, really stressed, really a lot of things. I couldn't do anything. Uh, that caused a lot of stress uh, between me and Charisse, um, frustration. Um, I was getting angry with myself um, because why can't I do this? Why am I not getting better? Uh, I'm, I've never been hurt. I'm, I'm strong. and Why can't I do this? It just kept coming back to me. And because I couldn't do this, and then because I didn't get better right away, I was starting to direct some of my inward anger at God. Uh, why aren't you he healing me? Why aren't I getting better? The doctors are saying I'm fine. There's nothing seriously wrong, but I have so much pain that I can't do anything. Uh, what's going on? On April 3rd, at about 2.30 in the morning, I woke up and wasn't able to sleep. And um, I tossed and turned for about a half an hour and finally clued in that maybe the Lord was maybe going to say something to me or wanted to get my attention. So I, um, I said to him, Lord, you know, what, well, what is it? And um, as I started to drift off to sleep, I had, uh, I had three people's faces come into my uh, mind's eye, and uh, one of them was Mike. And in each of the cases, the Lord gave me a sentence for each of these individuals. I fell back asleep, but in the morning when I woke up, I wrote them down in, uh, in the, my book. And in my book, it's, uh, I felt the Lord say, about Mike, I have called you, prepare your heart for me. It was very specific, I have called you, prepare your heart for me. And uh, I did not know Mike at this time. I knew him to see him to see that, oh, well, that's Mike Miller. But I didn't know anything about him or his background or anything like that. What I do remember is about a week after the, this, this night, visitation, so to speak, um, I saw Mike from afar and on a Sunday morning service and felt very clearly that, felt very strongly that the Lord said, uh, this man is a marked man and I'm calling him to step up to the plate. I'm calling him to step up to something and I'm calling him out of something where he was before and this would be something that would be new and uh, it was the Lord's call on his life. Yeah, during the time that I was off, um, we were starting to talk about harvest and what harvest was and looking at joining them and they were advertising the downpour in Hamilton and uh, Nor dad was suggesting that we the church go check it out anybody that wanted to and was willing to see what harvest was all about go check it out and uh, I wanted to go um, I wanted to see you know what it was about and see if they were good enough to be, have us join them uh, again uh, the pride of myself and and what I've done and what we have a church has done um, stepping in there um, also I wanted to go but then thought no I can't because we don't have the money being off work I couldn't uh, we couldn't really afford to do anything 